Today we're going to be taking a look at the Lucky Green Air Jordan 1s, also known as the Celtics 1s. Now before we start breaking down this shoe, we got to talk about the history first. And don't worry, at the end of the video, I'll be comparing the new retro against the 2009 DMP version. In 1986, Michael Jordan faced off against the Boston Celtics, and in one of the games, he scored 63 points in a double overtime game. He also had 6 assists, 5 rebounds, 3 steals, and 2 blocks. Back then, Michael Jordan was a really young player in the league, and he hurt his foot, and he missed 64 games that season. Yet yet was still able to find his way to help his team to the playoffs. Although he wasn't supposed to be playing in the playoffs because they wanted him to heal his foot for the next season, he still decided to play and went out and balled out. And for those that were wondering or have the argument, yes, he still did score 63 points and broke the record in the NBA for most points in the playoffs, but they lost the game by a couple points and they ended up getting swept by the Celtics that same series. But either way, that story was something that inspired Jordan Brand to release the Defining Moments package back in 2009, which I still have in my collection to this day and I love these. Just look at the retail tag right here, 225 bucks. <laughs> Those were some good times back in the day. Now that you know a little bit more history about the 2009 pair and what causes us to think a little bit about this shoe right here, let's go ahead and start breaking down all the styles, cuts, and materials of these, and then we'll show you the differences between the two because honestly, there's actually a lot. So starting off with the box right here, you have your classic Air Jordan 1 OG style box, but you got a little bit of a twist. Instead of the red branding, you have the green branding right here, all black with the lift off lid. And then on the size tag, it reads Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG black, lucky, green, white. Unfortunately, this is a size 10, not for me. Shout out to my guys over at Hearts for holding me down. I appreciate you guys for letting me get this review in, but unfortunately, they didn't have a size 13 yet, so I'm still looking for a pair. We'll get into that a little bit later. Either way, let's crack open this box. Lifting off the lid, you got your classic white paper, and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. So my initial first impressions of this sneaker when I first saw them on the internet, I loved them. When I saw them in hand, I love them. I think this is a really nice shoe and I'm excited to give you guys this review because you know I have the DMP pair and this one is just like a newer retro version with the better leather quality materials. And you got that newer OG style cut, which we'll get into in a bit when we talk about the differences of the shoes. But either way, I'm excited about this release and I definitely wanted to make sure I got a review for you guys as well. So looking at the bottom of the shoe right here, you have your retro style Air Jordan 1 outsole, all green right there. Wrapping up to the midsole, you got a pure white with a white stitch. And then onto the upper, you have that toe blocking when it comes to the OG color blocking of the toe style, which I should have brought a version, but I'll show you guys a photo. This is what that looks like with the red and this is more of a green iteration right here. So very similar when it comes to the OG toe blocking. Now we have seen the new version that a lot of people know of when you think of shattered backboards or if you think of like the purple toes or different things like that, I could understand that. But when it comes to actual OG toe color blocking, this is what you're gonna see. Now, as I feel on the leather throughout the shoe, you have a couple mixtures of different leathers when it comes to the smoothness and then how tumbled it is on the back end and then on the midfoot panel as well and how soft it is. This is a little bit more firm. It does feel a little soft and it's more smooth on the front end around the toe with the black area and on the top end with the white area on the top of the vamp right here. And then when you go to the back end where the green is, this is where you're gonna see more of a softer tumbled leather here where the lucky green color is. We like to call these Celtics ones, which again, we'll get into the comparisons in a second. You have a leather swoosh right here, all black. And then you have a white leather panel on the side on both in and outside of the foot. And then a black leather collar on the back end. And we can't forget our classic branding with the Air Jordan Wings logo on the side of the ankle and then your Nike Air in green on the top of the tongue. Now these come standard laced with a pair of green laces, which are just a little bit brighter than the actual green on the back end. Hopefully you can see that difference. I'll try to put it side by side for you guys as well so you can see. I don't know, it's really, really close, but I can say in my eye, it looks like the green laces are just a little bit more bright, have that little neon kind of vibe to it. Nothing crazy though, I think people wouldn't really have a problem. Now, these have an additional pair of black laces right here that come inside of here. You got the move to zero vibe right here with the cardboard holding the laces. And then on the inside of the sock liner, you have all black, black behind the tongue and a green Nike Air on the bottom of the heel. So now that you've seen some more details of this shoe, let's compare them against the DMPs because there's a lot of differences. So first off with this pack, as you can see, it's a lot bigger because it's two pairs of shoes. So you got the hardwood right here, representing the basketball court when he had the 63 point game. And then you got the different elements right there with the green hits on the top. Now, this comes, as you can see, like I said earlier, $225 was a retail, which is crazy because these is like 170 or 180 or something like that. So times have definitely changed to say the least. 
But you got the Bulls Air Jordan ones right here. Jordan on the back, Jordan on the front. We don't need to talk too much about these because we gotta get into the comparison of the Celtics ones. One second, as we pull this part out. And then I can show you guys the differences. Mine are a little bit dirty. I, I should have cleaned them up a little bit, but either way, we'll get into it. So, if you look at these two shoes right here, maybe I should, nah, we'll just do it like this, it'll be good. If you look at these two shoes right here, you can see to the untrained sneakerhead eye, they look this like the same shoe. I get that, I get that. Now, to all my sneaker wizards out there and all my people in the DNA fam, you guys know the differences. And if you don't, I'm gonna show you guys the differences. So first off, the overall shape of these two sneakers, as I put them side by side, you can see the difference of the shape of the shoes because this is the retro high Air Jordan 1 from the era, that 2008 to 2010 era when the Jordan 1s were kind of changing and we were just finally starting to get Jordan 1 highs because Jordan 1 mids used to be popping before that, which is a whole nother story. But this was what we got before we started to get the OG style, the OG cut is what they, these are titled, as we saw on the label, Air Jordan 1 High OG. So this is the new retro OG style. And then yes, obviously we know the 85 cut came back out later, but either way, this style and cut came before this, and now we're starting to see this kind of come in and be the new playing factor, and everybody loves this more because a couple of different things, not only because of the materials on these two shoes, but the actual Jumpman branding on the back end, on the heel of the shoe right here, you can see that there's a Jumpman stitched on the back. A lot of the retro Jordan 1 highs back in the day, they had the Jordan Jumpman on the back end of the shoe, and that's something that we never really saw. That we would only see that on mids and highs, but not the actual OG colorways and the OG styles and cuts. So a lot of people were happy about that. And then also the other thing was the big square Jumpman in the air on the tongue. Everybody wanted the Nike Air. That brought back the OG vibe as well. And as you can see right here, any OG Jordan 1 high, you have the Nike Air on the tongue. So again, this is something that a lot of people love to see when it comes to this new retro version, getting that same classic OG cut and style that we typically have seen over the past, I don't know how many years it's been like, well, it's about eight years now. It's been a while, actually. Now, another difference besides that, also when it comes to branding aspect, you have, you can see right here on the Wings logo, this one is more of a stamp and it's kind of shinier. And then this one is more embossed in, as you can see the Wings logo on the new retro. So it's definitely a little bit different on these two. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section on that end. And then obviously, like I said, the leather quality and materials, as I put the two heels side by side, you can see with the tumbled leather. And these ones, yeah, we know, the leather just wasn't as nice back then i get that but at the same time there was so much nostalgia for this era and all the collectors at this time so i can see why people still love these ones to this day and say hey the new retro doesn't have anything on the 2009 pair now one final thing i'm not sure everybody noticed as well you actually have a nubuck type swoosh when it comes to the swooshes on the 2009 retro and then on the 2023 like i said earlier it's a black leather right here so there's like the tongue the shape the Jumpman logo on the back, the Air branding, the uh, swoosh, you know what I'm saying? You're starting to see the differences and then obviously the boxes are different. So there's at least five to seven different elements to the sneaker that set these two apart. The Nike Air on the insole, the Jumpman on the insole, the different elements like that. So after seeing all the similarities and differences between the two shoes, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Now, I always like to do this on a poll on my Instagram story to see what everybody thinks on that. Whether the shoe is fire or trash. And I asked the people the simple question, what do you think about this shoe? And this is what they said. 88% of the people chose fire and 12% of the people chose trash and it makes complete sense. I think this is going to be a sneaker that a lot of people love yet at the same time I don't think the price is going to be too crazy when they first come out and then over time it will jump up in value but because we know that all the hype isn't around Jordan 1s anymore and everybody's loving Jordan 4s I think these are going to be really easy to obtain or for the most part they shouldn't be that hard to obtain and if you do have to pay over the retail price it shouldn't be too much. Now when it comes to the comparison between the 2009 and the 2020 three retro I am honestly kind of shocked by the results right here just because I know I have a huge sentimental value when it comes to this one in particular on the 2009 so I can get that but at the same time there's going to be a lot of new sneaker heads coming into the game that weren't collectors at the time and wanted to get these and now they finally have the chance all these years later so I understand that as well but these results to me are kind of shocking 63% of the people chose the new retro and 37% of the people chose the old retro now for me in particular I was thinking maybe some Somewhere around like 45, 55, maybe all the nostalgia from 
that one and everything like that. I get it, there's a jump man on the tongue and on the back and all those other elements as well. But at the same time, it's like, bruh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, I, I, they did better on the quality of leathers for sure on this one, but these ones just hit a little bit different. And maybe it's again, because of my generation of collecting and being around for that long. So I could understand honestly, both sides of the realm of why people chose one or the other. Makes complete sense. At the end of the day, both shoes are fire. I think both are worth having in the collection. And if you have a chance to get these for a decent price or retail, I think you're gonna be a very happy camper with this sneaker. So let me know what you guys think about these down below in the comment section. I'm excited to hear how you feel. Good luck on the release date. And if you guys wanna see any other future comparisons or reviews, make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it for you guys. I would never let you down. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there. My DNA, hey, the only choice I like to you made it to the end of this video do you know what package this is right here this was a good time if you guys want to see the review of these let me know we, we got to school some of the new heads because mids used to be popping i was made for it it's in the dna i was made for it it's in the dna i was made for it it's in the dna the only choice i like to make